Hello again everybody. So today I'm back and again you might have noticed it is a bit different. I explained everything in my last video which I'll link down below. But long story short, basically I've moved to London and it's really noisy. So it's difficult to record videos there. But this weekend I've come home for some family birthdays and things and it's the perfect chance to record some videos. And the stress I was having was, well I've not got any of the books I'm currently reading or the new things I've bought here to wave around, so I'm not going to lug them back on the train and the tube and things to get here. And then it hit me, what is here is all the books I had when I was growing up that I've kind of just left here because I've got no room at my own place. So they're also on the shelves behind me here, these are all the books I grew up reading, the ones I devoured as like a five and six year old. And today I'm going to be talking about those videos. So as you'll have told from the title, these are my top five childhood book series. So I have talked a bit in the past about the books that really influenced me as a child and that have stuck with me and that I still think about now. These are some of the more forgettable books, or these are the ones that I hadn't remembered I'd read or that hadn't stuck with me as much, but that I remember absolutely loving as a child. So it's those kind of five more unusual children's series that I loved that haven't stuck with me. So that doesn't count things like Harry Potter and the Chronicles of Narnia, things like that aren't in here. But these are just five of my favourite series from when I was a wee little boy. First up then is the Spooks series by Joseph Delaney. So they recently made these into a really god-awful film. And I don't even know how many books there are now. I know they've done a main series and loads of spin-off novels. And I did kind of stop reading them after about book five or six. But I remember at the time, really, really enjoying them. I remember being really scared by them. They're kind of... It's a bit ghosty. It's about a little boy who's apprenticed to a spook, unsurprisingly. And he... They basically, they're challenged with kind of eliminating evil spirits and ghosts and hauntings and malevolent forces. And it's just really interesting. Um, it's kind of a fantasy old world setting. And they're just really well written. They're really interesting. I did get a bit bogged down because they were a lot of the same. And there wasn't many new characters and much development throughout the series. But at the time I remember really enjoying these and these captivated me and actually scared me a lot more than any other book series I read as a child. Now, while we're on the vaguely horror front, the other series I read, and actually I read all, pretty much all of this author's books, and I absolutely loved them. It's Dan Shan's Cirque de Freak series. So this is the series about vampires, and I've always had a bit of a thing against vampires where I've never really liked them, I've never really got it. This series was so good. It was kind of a little bit creepy and skin crawling, but it wasn't necessarily too scary. And it actually made vampires like the, the creatures they were originally intended to be, rather than the lovey-dovey Twilight era rubbishins. And it's just a really clever series. There are 12 books. Um, the main character in it is called Dan Shan as the author. It's, very, it's all a bit unusual. But it's basically just about a kid who gets made into a vampire um, to stop himself dying, if I remember rightly, or his friend from dying, one of the two, and he gets caught up in this Cirque de Freak, this travelling circus, and all these kind of ongoing wars between um, vampires and other mythical creatures and other types of vampire, and it's just a really interesting, quite epic actually over the 12 books, kind of fantasy horror series, and if you've never read any of these, definitely read them. Um, I know Darren Chance had quite a few series, there's a zombie series which are really good, and then there's the kind of Lord Lost Demon Arta series, which I also adored. But these were the first ones by him I read, and the first ones that really stuck with me. And I think even now, I would go back and read this series and really enjoy them. Now before I show you the next one, I do first need to apologise, because I'm aware I talk about this author quite a lot. But he's just one of my favourite authors, and basically everything he's ever done is gold as far as I'm concerned. And this series, I remember devouring and waiting so long for the last few to come out. The Keys to the Kingdom series by Garth Nix. So it's Mr. Monday, goes all the way through to, I can't remember what, I think it's Lord Sunday. And basically, it's a really strange kind of alternate universe where the, the main character kind of falls through a doorway and then he has to go around this other world collecting different keys for each day to try and save this world from the kind of oppressive people running it. What's really good is that each person, each of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday people, has their own kind of domain and they're all so different. So the Wednesday one is called Drown Wednesday, and that's kind of a piratey nautical area. Uh, and they all go through. There's one which is kind of like a mine, and it's just really interesting. It's very much structured like a video game. I think that's part of the reason I probably quite liked it. 
but they're just really interesting, really good characters, really unusual, and it's Garth Nix, so I'm always going to love it. But it was one of those series that really, really hooked me, and I remember the wait for the last books being excruciating, which is always a really good sign. This next one is really unusual, and I wasn't thinking about doing this. Then I just kind of caught it out of the corner of my eye, and actually, I possibly spent more time with this book series than any other book series, and you will understand why when I show you what it is. This is the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, but basically it's one of these kind of fighting fantasy games where it's kind of like a baby Dungeons and Dragons. It, choose your own adventure is basically the term that they use for them. So I remember I never actually completed this first one, but I must have given it a go about 15 times. I had like sheets and sheets of maps where I was trying to keep track of where I'd gone, big lists of all the items I'd collected, all the enemies I'd killed, all my HP, and it's just so clever. It's literally like a video game in book form, and you kind of follow it through. So it starts off that you're this adventurer, you appear at this mountain, you've got this initial equipment, you go in, and the first thing is, do you want to go left or right in this tunnel? And you choose, and you turn to the next page, it tells you, and that follows on from the story, and it's just so clever. I don't know how old I was when I started reading these, but I remember being fascinated that books could be this kind of interactive, um, and I absolutely loved this. I, something I've considered having another go off since because I remember loving them so much and they've kind of gone a lot out of fashion now. I know they were quite popular when I was younger but we've had a few people that when I used to work for the bookshop requesting these and we could never find them and it's just such a clever interesting series. It really works your imagination and it's a much more interactive experience than a lot of other books and I think it's one that as a kid I adored and I'd be interested to know how many other people played this kind of thing whether it was just me or whether these were things that actually were quite popular um, I remember stealing the dice from my Monopoly set every time to try and use that to roll for the attacks and things and it's just such fond memories I've got and definitely I think even if you're an adult or a grown up now it's the kind of thing you will still really enjoy. So the last one, again I'd forgotten about these, I have no idea how I'd forgotten about these and then I realised I've got probably about 25 of these books hidden away down there and I know there's even more of them now. Horrible Histories, Terry Deary. Now I challenge you to find me a child who has never read a Horrible Histories book because these were, they were in schools, they were just so interesting, they were really gruesome, and it was like everything you wanted from history as a child. I put a lot of the fact that I did a history degree down to these books. I think, especially I remember the Romans one was one I flipped through a lot, and that's what I did a lot of my degree on. And I think it's really easy to follow the link through that. And I just think they're such a good series, it makes non-fiction real world events really interesting for children and I know Terry D has actually gone on to write some adult books in a similar style now for those kids like me who grew up loving horrible histories and want that same kind of accessible history for the older age and I think they're just such interesting books so cleverly done so funny and I remember I absolutely loved these when I was younger and I'm so glad to see these are still a thing now Definitely, if you've never read a whole history book, pick one up and flick through, because you can just see from the first page how good they are for kids, and I remember absolutely adoring these. So there we have it, that was a real walk down memory lane for me, my top five favourite book series as a child that kind of haven't lingered with me. And it's just such an interesting mixture of stuff I had. A lot of fantasy stuff, you can definitely see where a lot of my reading comes from now. And it's just so good to go back and see these books. And I know I was thinking about how to make the clear out and getting rid of some, but it's just so hard to do because they're such an important part of what I was like as a kid, and I don't really want to get rid of that. So, be really intrigued to know what your guys' books were as kids. What did you read? What did you really get stuck into? What's, what have you read that you'd kind of forgotten about until you've thought about it more? It's just really interesting to see those books that you'd forgotten you read, which actually can quite often be some of the best. Just as you're a kid, things don't stick in your head quite as easily. As always, a like and subscribe would be really appreciated. Please comment to let me know what you read. I'm really intrigued. And if anybody did the Choose Your Own Adventure books, tell me, because I'd be so intrigued to know what people thought about them. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your continued support. It really makes a massive difference, and I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you soon with my next video.